Mm. Right. Welcome back from the sports segment on the first line morning show here on TV Gold in Accra. It's time for the issue this morning. On the issue, of course, you know that uh, the NDC are gearing themselves up to elect their national executives. As I've been saying, to match the NPP, boot for boot, ahead of the 2016 election. Uh, this morning, we have one of the candidates in the studio aspiring to be one of the uh, national vice chairperson of the party. I mean, uh, she's been a political mother to many, uh, be it uh, young men, young women. And one thing I know for sure is that she's been very active within the party and in governance as uh, well. I'm talking about Anita de Souza <coughs> this morning. She's my guest as we spend some time and, uh, you know, have a conversation uh, with her, her chances of becoming uh, the national vice chairperson of the uh, uh, National Democratic Congress. Anita de Souza, good morning to you and welcome to the show. Good morning, sir, and uh, good morning to your viewers. Right. Now, if you are watching us and then you have a contribution, uh, contribution, uh, probably a suggestion, or I mean a question, you might just want to, you know, uh, send it to us via our WhatsApp platform. That is on 040 I'd like to be the line as well for you. Then you join with your voice. Don't be a passive viewer, especially if you are a delegate. Anything that she is the woman cut out for the job and does her come uh, Saturday, 20th December. Well, um, you want to tell us a little about yourself and probably, I mean, how has the campaign been so far? Thank you very much. Uh, I will start with the political history. Right. I started as a branch woman organizer to world woman organizer, constituency deputy organizer, then from there to the national deputy propaganda secretary, then to national woman organizer. Mm. And I'm, uh, I'm now vying for the vice chairperson. Right. That's, that's great. You've gone through the ranks. Yes, and as I mentioned, very active in the party. Now, tell us, how has the campaign been so far? So far, so good. Mm. I never knew that our delegates and even the supporters loved me so much until when I came out with a, a statement that I'm not contesting for the women leadership. Mm. So later, when I came back to say that I'm going in for the vice chairpersonship, they were so excited, they called, assuring me. And also, going to some of the regions, I've really seen that it's always good to sacrifice for your party. It's not with money, but the love that you show to the party and the sacrifice that you make. To you, you think that people are not looking at it or watching. They have really shown love, and I know 20th December they will surely vote for me. And so, have you gone around the country? Them. I mean, all the regions? No, I've been to four regions. Four regions? Yes, but uh, the reason why I've not been able to go to all the 10 because of the Women Congress in WA. I have to make sure that everything goes on well. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, with the National Planning Committee, I'm also the only lady among them. And I also have to assist so that Congress on Saturday will be successful. So I've not been able to go to all the regions. But I've sent messages and I've also spoken to all the chairmen and some secretaries. And I've prayed that when we get to Kumasi on Friday night, I'll go to where they are lodging right. and talk to them and also listen to what they have for me in terms of advice. Right. Now, you are quite optimistic that come Saturday, uh, you're going to emerge victorious. Yes, yes. Um, what has been the message you've been, you know, uh, 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 disseminated uh, for the benefit of the delegate? Thank you very much. The message one is as a woman organizer, you know, I started uh, strongly as Deputy Propaganda Secretary. Mm. And I realized that uh, the women had the majority. But in terms of decision making, only few women are there. And I got to know that it's due to two things. One, confidence then at times the insults so i decided to go as the national women organizers to prove to them that if i'm able to stand all this then they can also do that and through the leadership i was able to send some outside ghana to be trained in terms of capacity building about 50 some went to brazil us uk angola and other places then in terms of the capacity building in Ghana, 
IEA Abantu and other NGOs have also trained about 150 women. Not only that, I also saw that as women in terms of entrepreneur, I also need to assist them. I have done that. Then the youth, though I'm a women organizer, but I also listen to our supporters a lot. So at times when the youth come and I think that I can help, I do that too. Sure. But why do I want to become mm. the national vice chairperson? Mm. In our party, it's not easy to get a budget. If you are not a lobbyist, you find it very, very tough. So I thought that, no, as a woman, I can't do it alone. So I should move to another level in order to allow other women to come in so that we can talk to the men, lobby them to get what we want. Because I believe that when women are empowered, it will definitely get to the youth and our husbands. I've also realized that under my leadership, we're having only five MPs, female. But through the strategies that I brought on board, we are now having 14. Also, we're not having many women as female DCs. Uh, because I had the opportunity to be part of the team, I'm able to increase the number to 21. But it's very disheartening. As I'm talking to you now, two are out of the 21. So we are left with 19. 19. So I said, no, it seems I have to move to another level in order to make sure mm. that when women are appointed, they are retained. So I took that decision that this is what I can do to help the women. Right. So that's why I came in. That's why I came in. Now, uh, just like in sport, um, we the guys who go like, I mean, Carlin Cup is different from Champions League. Being a women's organizer is different. It's a different ballgame altogether for being a national uh, vice chairperson. How sure are you that indeed when you're being given the law, definitely you won't disappoint people? Because it's, it's, it's two different things. My dear brother, mm. Anita was National Deputy Propaganda Secretary. Right. So that does not mean that I can't handle the vice chairpersonship. I can. One, you need to know the challenges. Mm. But if you have not been there, how will you know the challenges? And these are some of the challenges. The first one, we're not having at headquarters, and every month you have to struggle to pay for your rent. So when we went to Tamale, as a team, we promised to build a headquarters. Then we also promised that we will not allow only few people to take over the party because some of our supporters had accident because of campaigning. Some have been sacked from their houses because they belong to our party. Some marriages are broken because of NDC. So what can we do to assist? So we said, why can't we come out with this biometric registration? As I'm talking to you now, we have over 600,000. And we are planning that if we can get at least 1 million per one Ghana CD a month, that means that every month we get about 1 million Ghana CD. Then we can give some to the core executives then also support people who do not have in our midst. Mm. That's one of the challenges. And the second one, I also saw that in terms of the appointment for the DC ship, you know, there are two, some districts have two constituencies. Sure. So they all lobby for their candidates. Mm. Before you realize this one will go for primaries, they will vote against the person. That's losing bonus. Right. Then another person will emerge. Before you realize a different person comes out, maybe that person may not have more information about our party. So when the person comes in, it creates more problem than we think. So I said, fine, if I have experience in that area, then what I can do to assist the party and the constituency level is we all sit down and look at the qualities that the people have and what they are bringing on board. By explaining to them, they will understand and give maybe Mr. A the opportunity. If he goes in and he did not perform well, then you can also be given that opportunity because of the experience that I've had through this vetting. Right. 
Yeah. Now, um, if you have any uh, question, you can just forward it to us via our WhatsApp platform, 0240 Do we have any conversation uh, with uh, Madam Anita Disoso this morning on the first lab morning show? Of course, her chances of uh, becoming one of the national vice chairperson of the NDC. Now, uh, Madam Anita, I mean, the point is that uh, your victory should translate the victory of John Romani Mahama Cup 2016, perhaps if uh, he's going to be your candidate anyway. And sure. <laughs> right. So what are you going to do to modernize the party ahead of the 2016 general election? Thank you very much. If God wills on Saturday, mm. they vote for me and I become one of the vice, I believe I will become the first vice. These are some of the strategies that I want to bring on board. Right. You know, the women are the majority. Mm. So this time, I want the women to propagate, to go to the grassroots, use our local dialects to tell the public what we have done. Because there are a lot of the policies that the government is pursuing that are good for the women. But it seems like it's only the men who comes out to propagate. But if we allow the women to take over, it will serve the party more. Then two, communication in NDC is very weak. You see somebody starting as a party communicator, then later he'll be calling him or herself government communicator. I think it's very bad because we have to separate the government from the party. So I wish that the communication or information ministry, in all the ministry they have the PROs, so we need information from all these ministries. Then the minister will give some of the information to us. Then we will go down there to propagate. Because at times I feel sad when two ministers are arguing. Mm. Like recently concerning the energy ministry and then the Ghana gas. Okay, so GMPC and GMPC. Yes, yes. Yeah. I didn't like it at all. Mm. Because I think that they have to sit down, Georgia, before they come. The tussle is still ongoing anyway. It's still mm. ongoing, and it's not good for our party or oh. our government. So I think when I come in with the communication, I also do the best that I can. Mm. But I'll use the women more. So by extension, would you say, I mean, uh, the current executive half the other party? No. Because since if a communication is a problem, then I believe that they should have solved that problem long ago, long before. My brother, the mm. party have done a lot. You know, at times we do send a list of names to the radio stations and TV stations, mm. but we don't own those stations. So they prefer people that they want to work with. And we have also been advising our people. But you know how some human beings behave. You will tell them maybe don't go to station A before you realize they are there. So what do you do to these individuals? Who flouts the rules? Oh, no. I think as a party, you can't always come with uh, strong discipline measures. Like I told you, don't go here. And you went there. So from today onwards, you are dismissed. You will not come to a party. No, no, no. We don't have to do that. At times, I don't blame them too much. Maybe they also want to contribute to the party, mm -hmm. but they don't know what to do. So to me, I think that we have to bring all of them together and let them know why we are telling them not to go to station A or station B. Because at times when they pay NDC MPP, to be frank, when you are listening to <laughs> the radio or TV, it's boring. It's like as if we don't have anything to tell Ghanaians. And I think that is very bad. So the skills that I got from as a deputy national propaganda have to use that skills and mm. help propaganda machinery and also communicators. No, you, you just said that uh, at times when you're listening to these communicators, it's as if you don't have anything to tell Ghanaians. Yes. Of course, critics will say that indeed you have nothing to tell Ghanaians because your government, uh, to be precise, John Dramani Mahama's administration, has woefully failed Ghanaians. And as a matter of fact, we need to kick him out of governance uh, come 2016. What would you say on that? It's not true. You know, when our late president Moss was alive, they were complaining. He's sick, he's not doing anything. But when we started showing the projects, they mm. were shocked and they voted for us. So let's just wait. We are left with two years. If God wills, mm. we will see what we are doing. This morning, I listened to Radio Good and I heard the Honorable Minister in charge of information, that's communication, Dr. Omanabuam. 
I was so impressed when I heard him, but I wish they would make a book mm. so that we'll give it to our communicators and also send some to the rural areas, explain to them for people to know what we are doing. My brother, we don't win elections on radio stations or TV stations. We win elections at the polling stations. Mm. So the people who decide, depending on the projects that the government have implemented in their areas. And these projects you talk about, indeed, uh, one would have a better appreciation of the project of Galway. But, of course, the men opposition have come out uh, on several grounds to say uh, these projects you talk about are, you know, over at the detriment of the ordinary taxpayer. And it appears the position of the government has been, you know, a little slow in defending all this or coming up with the accurate figures and facts. But when they come out to mm. debate and said, it's not right, we are not doing this, we are not doing that, do you want them to praise us? They can't praise us. Mm. They can't. They have to tell people informations that are not right so that they will believe them. This is what they have been doing and they will continue to do it. Yesterday, I was telling someone that they should tell Nanadu to go and sit down and look at his manifesto and stop disturbing us. Because as I'm talking to you now, they have not come out with their manifesto. So why are they disturbing should us? Should he review the 2012 manifesto or come up with a different oh, manifesto? I don't, I don't think that they have anything to offer. Because as a party, NDC, we don't talk much, but we performed a lot. So they should wait and see what will happen in 2016. I believe that we are going to retain but it will all depends on the leadership, the people that comes in, that will determine our future. Does it really matter about the people that comes in? Because um, as we have a conversation right now, our national headache is the Dumso Dumso, which of course has destabilized industries and domestic life as well. It is the plea and cry of many Ghanaians that we, we find a lasting solution to this. And apparently, um, two years already in his administration, hasn't been able to, you know, mitigate that dumb sort of. So I need to still think uh, he has a chance of winning 2016 election. Yes, we have a chance of winning. My brother, it seems some of us have forgotten where we are coming from. Mm. When we left power in 2001, January, there was no dumb sort of 2006. Right. 2007, MPP went and bought generators about 127 worth over $100 million. They didn't use it. They left it there. Mm. They didn't use it. But when we came in, we promised that we are going to solve the problem. That's why our dear president, the late President Mills, went to China for the gas pipeline. Two, it was Nigeria who was giving us some gas. Mm. But in 2012, we saw what happened. There was a problem with the pipeline. A ship went and destroyed the pipelines. That created all this mess. But our dear president is not just sleeping or sitting down. I can tell you he's not sleeping because of this energy crisis. We know if economy will grow, it depends on energy. Right. So he's doing the best that he can. So they should give him the opportunity. He's doing it. We know what is going on. We want results. Ghanaians are demanding oh, for results. My not brother, to go my talk oh. shop or lip service. No, 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 no. no. We are doing the best that we can. Mm. We are doing the best that we can. Do you know Nigeria, they have fuel, they have gas, everything. But their doom so is even worse than ours. Right. Do you also know that in West Africa, apart from uh, South, uh, in Africa, apart from South Africa, we are number two in terms of energy. Mm. Go to Togo, Africa, and other places. Their tariffs are higher than ours. You can't compare oranges to apples. Uh, Nita Disoso. Ghana is Ghana. Kodi was Kodi. Togo is Togo. We have all what it takes to to, 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 to provide energy, good energy services to the people of this country. We are doing. We have been told that by, by next January, um, they are going to give you tariffs upwards. My brother, do you also know that some of the problems come for, from us as Ghanaians? A lot of people are not paying electricity bills, mm. illegal connections, but we are not trying to come out and tell the government that maybe go to so, 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 so area, Mr. A is doing this, Mr. B is doing this. Look at the big, big houses. Before you get there, beware of dogs. How many people go there to take electricity bills from them or tariffs from them? Right. No one does that. Mm. So we should also try and assist the government by doing what is right. 
Let me tell you, most of the money, the revenue that we are getting, we are using it to pay salaries, isn't it? Yeah. But look at the ghost names. Look at the ghost names. Look at what is going on in Kolebu. Before they said they have a staff of about 5,000. Mm. Before we got to know, there was about 1,000 something ghost names. Is it our dear president who is doing that? Right. Let me just engage the thoughts of our viewers um, this morning on the show. 0277-720089. Number to call if you have a submission to share with us. Um, a question for Anita de Soso. Or probably, I will delegate and you believe that uh, she is cut out for the job. And that she will be able to steer the affairs of the party ahead of the 2016 election. We want to uh, get interactive with us right now on our phone line also uh, your messages on our whatsapp platform 0240-772-272 as we await some of the calls um but um yeah, apparently we are hearing that uh, vote buying is creeping into the ndc actually uh, some people have already drawn analogy from the past i mean with the youth in congress i don't know what happened at the uh, women's congress I, I wasn't there so i can say much about that now ha your rounds has there anything about demand of you know, money in, in a stand for, for vote. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, to right, just hold on for me. You answered that. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much. Stand down the volume on your TV set, sir. Yeah, I'm the grand channel of uh, that uh, lady. I need to see you. Okay, talk Hello? to us. Yeah, I'm the grand channel. At La Paz, my name is Nasir. I need to I know I very well, so I wish you a good luck. Mm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, my brother, for that. Um, 0277 More to get uh, in touch with us this morning and then have a word with uh, Anita Diso. So, as I mentioned, if you believe that she is the woman for the job, uh, and you are a delegate, I mean, try your best to endorse her. I come Saturday, and even Hello? if you're not a delegate, of yeah, course, your morning. campaigns and your good messages Hello. will do. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from, sir? Yeah, I'm Abdullah from Ilma. Abdullah, talk to us. Yeah, um, I realize that Anita Dissusu keeps on jumping from one question to the other. So, would you tell her to answer some of the questions straightforwardly? No, which one? I mean, yeah, help me out, my brother. Yeah, you asked her a question about energy and then before you realize you jump into Kolebu issue. So let's uh, address <laughs> Right, right. Thank you very much, Abdallah. Um let me just spend that down. Uh she will do that for us uh before maybe you are not satisfied with the answer anyway. So probably uh, she will do that eh? uh zero two seven 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 two zero zero eight nine uh number to call so you get on board at the good show morning. this morning. Hello good morning sir hello Hello. Well, I think I lost the caller there. Um, let me just um, share with you a number of your uh, messages um, that has come so far on the show. Um, this one says that, um, uh, Madam, you are the best candidate, uh, followed by Zako. Okay, you want to say Harry Zako? Okay, wish you well, JB at um, Achim. I believe I've got that right. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Right, good morning to you, my brother. Please identify yourself. Hello. Good morning. Please identify yeah, good yourself. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, my brother. How are you doing? Talk to us. Yeah, my name is Al Hassan. I'm calling from Tema. All right, talk to us, my brother. Yeah, my brother, I I believe I believe strongly that Madame Anita Dissoso have done a lot for the party. Hmm. And uh, my problem that I have with uh, Madam is that you see, she started with us uh, because we know that grassroots as a serial caller of communicators of the party. But the problem that I had, you know, since she got the position as a woman organizer, sometimes she doesn't at least attend to us again. And we started this work together. And I think that you see, when the party is coming to win or before a political party can win a power, it's so it started from through the grassroots. And what we are doing uh, on radio, on TV, calling radio day in day out. And she knows it. She started with us. But I want to know, why does she dump us? She does not even listen to us again. She doesn't share anything to, with right. us again. Right. Um, keep watching. Definitely she will address that. 
I've been able to pen your question down. I'll pick just about two more calls, and then we'll move on to the messages. Then she will address uh, the questions uh, uh, that have come Hello. in. Uh, Hello, good Parker. morning. Good morning, Parker. Yes, please, your name and where you're calling ah, from. Parker, my name is Ashabi. I'm calling to you. And Parker, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Ashabi. Talk to us. Uh, Parker, first of all, let me send my duty to our incoming national organizer, Fufi Adam, and Harit Ako, and then cool. Uh, Parker, please, I want to... Uh, uh, I want to, uh, what, what do you call it, ask Anita for me. Mm. Why he was a former woman organizer, for one thing, why did he resign in tell me to, uh, what do you call it, vice chair? Because if you forget there, uh, you know, you did not do anything, you don't work, you do not have the grassroots. You, you are disappointed as you said to vote for you, Anita. Well, thank you very much. Um, um, we should address that. Um, one more call, and then we are done. Uh, 0277 Now, this one says that, uh, wow, Mama Anita, you look sweet in your beautiful dress and hairstyle. Uh, you indeed deserve the position after being among the winning team all these years. Hello. Uh, hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Please turn on the volume on your TV set, please. Okay, good morning. I send greetings to my father. Right. Talk to us. Talk to us. Well, I think I lost the call out there. Now, going back to the messages here. Um, uh, you look sweet, beautiful dress, hairstyle. You indeed deserve the position after being among the winning team all these years. And I pray the new woman organizer takes after your unique qualities. And it's for Monica Coins in Navongo. Uh, please, Madam Anita, how possible can you convince to bring on board floating voters, especially uh, women for the NDC come 2016, uh, biggest tamale. Um, Al Hassan Bosa, Deputy Propaganda Secretary uh, Tama East NDC. I pray Madam Anita wins, but the problem we are having as grassroots against her is she started as a serial caller and communicator of the party and knows the challenges of the communicators of the party. Which she ignored us uh, <laughs> does not respond to the CR callers anymore, but we pray she wins. Okay. Um, again, you add Anita is talking about empowerment of women. I want to know how many women has she trained to represent the party on radio programs because I have not seen any. Parker, Anita is also will win, but not the first vice. Uh, the first vice will go to Honorable Samuel for so ample from a sum in Borga. All right. Um, Anita, you are hardworking. You are a hardworking woman as compared to some selfish uh, stakeholders in this country. Uh, Derek from KJB Asato in the Volta region. I believe I've got that Asato. Right. Uh, Madam Anita, advise your government to come and complete the road in the Volta region. Uh, Derek again from KJB. Madam, you are the best candidate, followed by Zako. Okay, I read this. Anytime I hear Mama Anita, I remember. Uh, it's here by elections. It's a what? It, uh, you want to say it's by elections? <laughs> the spelling here is wrong. Uh, she's a cool, she's cool but powerful woman. Good luck, Mama Anita. Mm -hmm. Abdul Samed from Dabuya. Uh, good morning, Madam Anita. Thanks very much. Let Ghanaians come here uh, and not and see like problem is even more than Ghana. Uh, I'm not really getting the composition of your message anyway. A lot of messages to read, but please forgive me. I wouldn't be able to read them. Let's quickly uh, touch on some of the issues being okay. raised by the callers. Uh, now, um, I mean, one of the major issues that you, you neglected the grassroots. Okay, I will start from the energy. Okay, okay. Uh, in terms of energy, we mm. are doing our best. And I don't know if you have also noticed something. If you go to some of the regions. Right like the northern, the border, and other rural areas. You won't see this zoom so much like in Kumasi and Accra. So I think that uh, we all need to watch very carefully. Either is some are intentional mm. or it's really the problem. Because okay. some people can try and sabotage the government mm. by putting some lights off in and out. Because I quite remember last year, one of the transformers, we learned that somebody went and threw a bomb. I don't know if you quite remember. Yeah, that. I, I heard yeah. of that. Okay. But, um, 
So my brother who asked question about energy, energy. we are doing our best. Okay. And I so know. talk about energy and yes, forget yes. about yes. Kolebu. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to Then let's go the to the uh, Syria college. Yes. When I started as a Syria college, I didn't depend on anybody because I sat down and realized that I need to build my own future. Mm. Because one thing I've seen with the Syria calling, if you depend on people too much, you will not get to anywhere. I started as a Syria caller. When I became the National Deputy Propaganda Secretary, we were having the meetings with them. But when I became the National Women Organizer, I can't have meetings with them without the propaganda machine or leadership inviting me. It's not done that way. So they can't blame me. They cannot blame me. Perhaps the party structures. Is that no, they have their leadership. Yes. So if they have their meetings, they have to call me to come. But I cannot call them that let's meet and leave the propaganda leadership. It's not done that way. Mm. Two, I've also trained more than 10 women. You should go, I will call some of their names. Teresa Wuni is one of them. Kate, Jessica, Tanya, there are many. I have to call a media man from Koforudia every week to a party headquarters to train these women. They can call them, they know them. They should call them or go to them and ask them, is it true that Anita really train you people? Because I know I can't do it alone. That's why I've trained those women. Then somebody also said that I've really disappointed them. Fine, maybe to him, but to many. That was in connection with you filling the grassroots and there's challenges. What have I done? The serial well, colors. No, no, you no, know no, the no. challenges. Which challenges? Yeah, I mean, they say you know you started at the serial colors, so you I know the started, challenges. Nobody helped me. I helped myself. No, but, but the, po the, the point still remains that no, I mean, even though you empowered yourself, but have perhaps you, come to you need me? to throw some, you know, no, weight behind them. No, they have the propaganda machinery. My brother, ask them if they can call back. Have they come to me hmm. to tell me that they have problems? They have not. So how would I know they have problems? Right. People who come to me with their problems, I talk to them, I assist them, I tell them where to go to, my brother. Right. So if you don't come to me, how will I know? Okay. And now, also if you think that you believe in somebody and you want to throw a message around that uh, you have filled the grassroots, you have done this, I can tell him a lot of people admire me. Not only filling the grassroots, but I've also sacrificed my life for us. To, re to come to power and to retain. Okay. And you know, as human being, I can't satisfy everybody. So I'm very happy for it. Right. The, uh, let's say the message right. that we all advise ourselves. Now, the very final question. I mean, why did you step down from the women's organizer position to the vice? I said it earlier that <laughs> as a woman, I was the only person there and mm. things were not easy. Right. You always have to rely on people. And I think that women being the majority, if more women come sooner, it will really assist the party. That's why I moved to another level very well that i don't want to lead the woman i love them so much mm. and i'm still a woman and i'm going to do the best that i can because if i don't love the woman how can i assist from four uh, from five mps to 14 then the dc is to 21 right you see, now you're very final them. message to the delegate i mean <laughs> come saturday a quick one on that thank you very much mm. for giving me this opportunity to my dear delegates you know who anita is Please, on Saturday, you kindly vote for me to continue with my good works. I'm on number three. Auntie Betty is on number 12, uh, 13, sorry. Mm. And I know that if they vote for two women, mm. we are going to assist the men for the party to retain its power. Please, please, please. That D-Day, people will come to you with a lot of promises. But be very, very careful. May God help us to choose good leaders. Thank you. Amen to that. May God help us to choose good leaders. That is a very passionate appeal to all the delegates and also to God as well. Many thanks for watching the show. Of course, you heard Anita De Soso, who has thrown herself, uh, put herself forward to be elected or endorsed as one of the uh, national vice chairperson for the NDC. I believe that. Uh, come 20th uh, December, Saturday, definitely, you will endorse her. Once again, thank you so much for your contribution and your questions, your text messages. We really appreciate them. 
want to say a, 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 a good morning and a big thank you to my producer ken and then i can my cameraman mickey i salute you my brothers and of course the first Le morning show returns tomorrow same time it's bye for now madam thank you very much for thank you.